Hello everybody and welcome to this. It's the first video in a brand new series on Jane Eyre. Everything comes from Mr Bruff's Guide to Jane Eyre, £3.99 at mrbruff.com and amazon.co.uk written by best-selling author Kerry Lewis. So today I want to talk about Charlotte Bronte who was born in 1816 and died in 1854. She was the third of six children born to the Reverend Patrick Bronte and his wife Maria. In 1821, the family moved from Thornton, which is near Bradford in Yorkshire, to Hayworth, where a year later, Mrs Bronte died of cancer. Now, although Charlotte's aunt helped Patrick to look after the children, he found the strain of raising such a young family difficult, and in 1824 sent seven-year-old Charlotte with three of her sisters to this boarding school, the Clergy Daughters School at Cowan Bridge. This absence of parent figures might be reflected in her novels as all four of her heroines are orphans. Now, after a year, the two eldest daughters, 11-year-old Maria and 10-year-old Elizabeth, became seriously ill with tuberculosis. They returned home and shortly died. And worried about the health of his remaining daughters, the Reverend brought home Charlotte, who is now eight, and Emily, now six. Now Charlotte uses the people and conditions of the clergy daughter's school as the basis for Lowood School in Jane Eyre. The trauma of losing Helen Burns is based on Charlotte's loss of her sister Maria and Charlotte's cruel teacher Miss Andrews becomes Miss Scatcherd and the tyrannical head teacher the Reverend Carus Wilson becomes Mr Brocklehurst. There are other parallels too. Hardships at both schools included small portions of sometimes spoiled food, insufficient heating, inadequate clothes for the winter and ep epidemics of fevers. Now we learn in the Lowood chapters that the Victorians believed in the miasma theory, which was basically the belief that diseases such as typhus were caused by bad air in the form of fog and mist. At Lowood, Jane states that the warm temperatures combine with the school's unhealthy location to create a breeding ground for typhus, and the Victorians were in fact unaware that typhus is spread by body lice and dirty conditions. In 1826, Mr Bronte gave his children a box of wooden soldiers. The toys appealed to the imaginations of Branwell, the girl's only brother. Charlotte, Emily and Anne, the youngest of the children, created and wrote about an imaginary world called Angria. And the literature from this time still survives and is known as Bronte Juvenilia. So um, that's quite a little interesting bit of information, the early beginnings of that story writing. When she was 15, Charlotte attended Roe Head School, which she returned to as a teacher from 1835 to 1838. Uh, in the novel Jane Eyre, this might be reflected in Jane finishing her education at Lowood School and then staying on as a teacher. A year later, Charlotte worked as governess for the Sidgwick family, but disliked the position and left after just three months. It was there that one of her pupils threw a Bible at her, which again is what we see replicated in chapter one of Jane Eyre, in which John Reed throws a book at Jane. Now Charlotte's distaste for living with another family and earning a living as a governess can be seen in her return to Haworth, where she and her sisters decided to establish their own school. To prepare for this, Charlotte and Emily went to Brussels in 1842 to finish their education, and Charlotte, after returning home to attend the funeral of her aunt, went back to Brussels alone and stayed until 1844. The influence of her time abroad can be seen in her novel Shirley, with the French-speaking Belgian brother and sister Robert and Hortense Moore, Villette and The Professor, which are all set in schools in Belgium, and of course Jane Eyre, with the French dialogue, which is instigated by Adele. So back in Haworth, the plans to open a school failed miserably. No one responded to the sisters' advertisements. It was empty. And their literary careers, however, uh, began then when Charlotte discovered some poems that Emily had written and this prompted the sisters to self-finance a collection of their poetry. 
So they self-financed a collection of their poetry, but only sold three copies. But it did not dismay them. They decided to carry on writing, a decision they would, of course, not regret. And although Charlotte's first novel, The Professor, was rejected for publication, her second novel was Jane Eyre, and, uh, Jane Eyre an autobiography as it was published, and it became a bestseller when it was published in 1847. In the same year, Emily's Wuthering Heights and Anne's Agnes Grey were also published. Now, Charlotte decided to publish under the name of Curra Bell because she didn't want her characters or locations to be recognised by people she knew, and she was aware of prejudice against female writers. When she'd been teaching at Rowhead School a few years earlier, she'd written to the poet laureate, uh, Robert Southey, to ask for his opinion of her talents, and he had replied, quote, Literature cannot be the business of a woman's life, and it ought not to be, end quote. So aware of this contemporary prejudice, the sisters chose to publish under male pseudonyms, keeping the initials of their first names. Charlotte, as we have seen, became Curra Bell, uh, Emily was Ellis Bell, and Anne was Acton Bell. Now, in Charlotte's novel, we have fascinating insights into contemporary beliefs and the culture of the time. So in Jane Eyre, we learn some of Charlotte's thoughts about the impact of the Industrial Revolution, which profoundly changed the social, economic and indeed the physical landscape of parts of Britain. Manufactured goods created much wealth for the factory owners, and in the novel we meet Rosamond Oliver's father, who owns a needle factory and a foundry, while his daughter uh, Rosamond is a philanthropist who gives away money to help others. Although conditions for the workers are not referred to in the novel, Bronte's negative views about the Industrial Revolution are implied in the Moore House chapters. In chapter 32, for example, Jane muses on how the Industrial Revolution has a powerful negative effect on art. She states that Marmion, a poem of passion and heroism set in the 16th century written by Sir Walter Scott, is one of those genuine productions so often vouchsafed to the fortunate public of those days, the golden age of modern literature. Now, Scott was a key figure in the Romantic movement, which glorified nature, focused on romance and passion, and has a strong sense of nostalgia. And these beliefs are obviously shared by Jane, who implies that the golden age of modern literature is over because of widespread industrialisation, leaving no room for grand gestures of bravery and passion. Although, in Jane's view, the Industrial Revolution threatened the artist's place in the world and was a threat to creativity, Jane reassures the reader further on in chapter 32 that poetry and genius not only live but reign and redeem, and without their divine influence spread everywhere you would be in hell, the hell of your own meanness. So this passionate outburst suggests that without the divine influence of poetry we'd be in a hell of our own making. And to enforce her point, she directly addresses the reader with the usage of the second person you, and deliberately uses repetition of hell and emotive language of your own meanness. So this is a passionate outburst, and because it has no relevance to the plot, the reader can conclude that Jane is voicing Charlotte Bronte's own views. A further example of how contemporary beliefs found their way into Jane Eyre is the use of phrenology. So phrenology was a pseudoscience which involved the study of the shape of people's skulls and faces, and Victorians believed that they could use this information to read a person's character type. We see an example of phrenology in the novel when Jane is ill in bed at Moore House. St John tells his sister that her physiognomy, her facial uh, characteristics are not indicative of vulgarity or degradation. Another example is when Jane first sees Mr Rochester at Ferndean. She states, in his countenance I saw a change that looked desperate and brooding. So it's obvious he has physically changed, but she attempts to read his countenance, his face, and deduces that his character has changed as well. Now, a year after the publication of Jane Eyre, Charlotte and Anne went to London, Emily refused to accompany them, to squash a rumour that the three novels were written by the same person. Their publisher, George Smith, was greatly surprised to learn that they were young women. He coped admirably by introducing them to his mother and taking them to the theatre. In September of the same year, Branwell, now an alcoholic and opium addict, died from tuberculosis, an infection of the lungs. And three months later, tuberculosis also took Emily, and then the following May, Anne. 
1849, the same year that Shirley was published, George Smith encouraged Bronte to meet her readers, and she was extremely shy about speaking to strangers, but met many great writers of the time, including William Makepeace Thackeray, Elizabeth Gaskell, and Elizabeth Gaskell later wrote Charlotte's biography. In 1851, she visited the Great Exhibition and the Crystal Palace in London, and in 1853, Villette was published. In 1854, Charlotte married the Reverend A.B. Nichols, and this was not the first time he proposed to her. Uh, Reverend Bronte had actually objected to the match regarding his famous daughter as too good for the impoverished Irish curate. Her father finally consented to the wedding, and they got married. Nine months later, the pregnant Charlotte died three weeks before her 39th birthday. Various causes of death have been cited, including tuberculosis, typhoid, acute morning sickness and pneumonia. Two years later, her first novel, The Professor, was published posthumously, and in the same year, Elizabeth Gaskell's biography, The Life of Charlotte Bronte, was published. So I hope you found this video useful. Please do subscribe to the channel and please do pick up a copy of The Guide to Jane Eyre.